In this video, we are going to take a look at how to use the new Image to Material AI powered filter to create a material from a single image input. I will showcase how to use the filter as well as explore various methods for tiling materials and using material blending to remove tiling repetition. To begin, I'm going to drag and drop the image that I'm going to be using in this video here to the Alchemist UI. I'm then presented with the new material creation template, and here's where I can choose image to material. And I have options for bitmap to material or the new AI powered. However, before I use image to material, I want to actually set this to use as bitmap because I'm gonna do a little bit of pre-processing before I feed this into the AI powered image to material. So with this set as use as bitmap, I'm going to click OK. Here in my layer stack, you can see that a base material has been created and the image has been imported. Here in the 2D view, I can view the image by scrolling over here to where I have the scan one input. So now you can see the source image that I'm going to be working with. Now, this is an image that I actually photographed right outside my front door. And because of the harsh directional light, we are gonna have some challenges creating a material from this source image. Now, before, like I said, we use the image to material, I wanna do a little pre-processing and I'm gonna start that by applying a crop. So here I can go to my add a layer and in my search field, if I do a search for crop, we have the crop filter. So I'm adding crop here to my layer. And what I'm going to do is switch the material outputs. I'm gonna switch this to layer inputs. And this allows me to see my layer inputs for my stack. I'm doing this because I wanna be able to take a look at the source resolution for this scan image. And I can see here that it's 4032 by 3024 and is non-square. So I can use this aspect ratio or this input size. I can enter that in here to the input size parameter field of my crop. So we had 4032, I'll hit enter. And then for the Y component, we'll set 0324 and once again, hit enter. This allows me to set my crop based on the original input size of that scan image. This is really good step to do when you're working with something that's non-square. Now, I am going to use my manipulator here to set my crop range. And you can see I can interactively position this. Here at the top of the UI, I'm going to choose the make square option. And so I can actually see the result of this crop. I'm gonna switch my layer input here to layer outputs. Now I can also grab the crop manipulator and make some adjustments here as well. So you can see I can also reposition this while viewing the actual effect of the crop. Now with this particular image, when I was holding the camera, I didn't actually have it quite level. And that's introduced a little bit of lens distortion you can see here towards the bottom. So here I'm gonna come over to my add layer and I'm gonna do a search for perspective. And we have this new option called perspective correction. So I'm gonna apply this filter and it gives me this corner pin effect and I can adjust these nodes here to basically just remove this lens distortion. So you can see I'm gonna make just a few adjustments. If I come over here to my perspective correction and disable this, well, the image goes away and that's because I'm set here to layer outputs. I wanna view my material outputs, so I'm gonna switch this option to material outputs. Now again, if I just enable perspective correction, here you can see the difference that we're getting. Now we're ready to apply the image to material filter. So again, we'll come up to add a layer. I'm gonna do a search for material. And here we have the image to material AI power. This is the option I wanna use. Left click to add it to my layer stack. So once the filter has finished processing, we'll then see a full render of the material here in our 3D view. Over in our 2D view, we can take a look at the individual channels. This is the data that the AI-powered material has created. So for example, we have our height, here's our normal, and our base color. Now I mentioned that we were gonna have a little bit of a challenge with this particular image due to the harsh directional lighting, but thanks to the AI powered image to material, that challenge wasn't actually much of a challenge at all. You can see here that all of those harsh shadows have been perfectly removed here within this base color. If I take a look here at the layer inputs, I can jump back and see that here is again, the harsh shadows. Here I'm gonna jump back to my material outputs, make sure I select my base color here, and you can see again, the shadows have been completely removed here in my base color. Before we move forward on our material, I wanna share a few details about the AI process. The high-res input is split into tiles of 512 by 512 to keep a small dimensionality in the neural network. This is important because otherwise it would consume too much video memory and would be almost impossible to train the AI. Every tile is then processed separately by the network and then merged seamlessly at the end. The AI portion of the process generates the base color and normal maps. 
The other maps are deduced from this data. In particular, the height map is computed from the normal, so each change to the normal affects the height. And speaking of training the AI, it's important to understand that this first iteration of the AI-powered image to material has been trained to work on various ground surfaces with outdoor lighting, such as the rocks we are working with in this video. For your own work, you can use the AI-powered image to material with content such as pebbles, pavements, concrete, dirt or sand, rocks, and forest ground to name a few. With the filter selected, we can come in and change some basic parameters. So we can start by taking a look at the overall normal intensity. We also have the normal details, which is a slider that controls the balance between a low res normal and a high res normal that are both inferred by the neural network. They are blended together before the height is computed. The low res normal represents the geometry low frequencies and the high res normal is the geometry high frequencies. We also have an equalizer setting here for the height, as well as some values for adjusting things like roughness and ambient occlusion strength. Now that we have our material, I'd like to take a look at how we can tile this material. So here in the 3D view, you can see that I have my tiling set to 3 by 3 and of course we're starting to see some seams. Also here in the 2D view, if I hit the T key, I can go into my tiling mode and sure enough we see definitely some seams here that we need to take care of. So there's various ways we can handle that here in Substance Alchemist. So let's just take a look at the options that we have. So first, I'm gonna come over to the layer stack and click add a layer. I'm gonna do a search here for tiling and you can see we have a tiling filter. Let's give this a try. So I'll left click to select this to add it to my layer stack. Now if we zoom in here into the 2D view, I'm actually gonna drop this uh, view over to height so that we can more clearly see what's happening. And if you see here, we have a seam. If I come over to edge and I turn off detect edges, you can see that we have an offset in our image and here we have a seam. Now if we enable detect edges, we use an algorithm that will detect the underlying shape and form and then it will try to distort that seam line so that we break that up and help to make it less recognizable. And we have some controls for this, such as our threshold, so you can see I can change this. The resolution of this effect is pretty high, so I can even come in and drop down my grid resolution. I can play around with things like the overall smoothness as well as blur the seam line. And so this can be an option. In this particular case, it's not really giving me the result that I want, uh, especially you can see I'm having some issues here. So I could keep trying to tweak this, but uh, instead, let's just take a look at some other options we have. So what I'm gonna do is just delete this filter. And now let's take a look at another option. Once again, we'll go to add a layer and let's do a search for tiling. And this time I'm gonna take a look at the make it tile advanced. So we'll left click and here you can see the result that we have just right off the bat. So this is what we're getting. Uh, again, we can see the seams have been removed, but uh, there's quite a few issues with this method as well. So first I'm gonna come over and make some adjustments. So let's take this color equalize radius and let's just move this up. Here, if I take my threshold and move this all the way down, you get a more clear idea of what's actually happening in this filter. So we have this offset of the filter and this gives me this cross seam. And then adjusting this threshold allows me to blur or dissolve that seam. Now I have some options such as mask invert. I can also control the height matching. So right now it's set to maximum, which uh, I'm not really sure I like what that's doing. So what I'm gonna do is just set the height matching to none. And so now this is the effect that I get. So this does an okay result. However, I can see right, right off the bat, things like this section here, I really don't like. And I guess I could go in and continue to play around with some of these settings here to try to you know, blend this as best as I can. But instead of doing that, why don't we just look at some different options as well? So again, I'm gonna come over to my layer stack and we're gonna delete this guy. Now for the next options, I'm gonna show you just a few different techniques. So here we can come over to, again, let's just say our base color. And this time what I'm going to do is just run the transform. And so I'm gonna just essentially create my own offset. So I'm just gonna left click and drag and just move and create an offset here. And so we have an option, if I come over to my add layer once more and I do a search for material, we have this option called material content aware fill. And this can be a powerful feature, let's take a look. So I'm going to add this filter here to my layer stack. Then I can come over here to my brush settings and I'm just going to simply paint a stroke over the seam line. So here I'm going to just paint a stroke. And this filter is going to attempt to remove this seam line by filling it with content from the image. 
So let's take a look at what we have so far. In this particular case, this actually did okay. Not perfect here, but it's an interesting option. We can also come in now and just draw another mask here for this vertical seam. Now one thing I want to say about using material content aware fill is that it can actually be quite slow to process. So it's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're working with higher resolutions like 4K. So I'm just going to let this process and then we'll take a look at the result. So here's the result we have thus far. Not perfect, but it's not too bad. And again, it's just another option that you have that you can work with here in Substance Alchemist. I'm not really happy with this section, so if I wanted to, I could go in and just paint another stroke and then again, just see what the content aware fill is going to feed back to me and see if feeding it more data gives me a better result. I could also come over here to my add layer, grab my clone patch, and then manually patch and clone some of these areas. So like I said, this is just another option that we have. Now what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna, once again, delete my layer, and let's look at another example. This time what I'm going to do is actually jump over to my clone patch. So let's add the clone patch here to my layer stack. Now, I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and I'm just going to sample an area. So in this case, maybe I'll just sample uh, right here. And then I'm just going to left click and drag and just create a stroke. You can see that this works actually pretty quickly. And then I have some settings here that I can change, such as my overall threshold. I can adjust my blur here and as well as my grid resolution. Reduce this slightly and again, just play around with that blur. So now I get something like this. Again, not perfect, but just another option. One of the new features that we have in Substance Alchemist when working with the clone patch is that you can actually come over and grab the clone source and left click and drag to reposition it. So one thing I like to do is once I have my clone set, I then just kind of move it around to see if I can't just find a different patch that might work a little better. So for example, maybe I could try something like this. And then of course, it's always uh, comes down to going back and just playing around with your thresholds and so on to see if we can't get something that's gonna work. Now here in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer on top. And this time I'm going to add a, yet again, another clone patch. And then I'm going to take care of my vertical seam. So it'll be the same process. I'm gonna come in and just sample a region and then just come in and paint my stroke. Just as before, I'm going to make some adjustments here to the threshold and blur and probably adjust my grid resolution. Now I may come over here to my actual source and move this around to see if I can't get something to fit that gives me an optimal result. Okay, so you can see here that I now have used a transform to do a manual offset and then two clone patches to remove the seam. So now that we have our seamless material, you can now see that we have the issue where we have this repeating pattern when we tile the material. So what I'd like to do now is take some steps to reduce this overall grid-like repeating pattern. So first, I'm gonna save the material. So I can come over to save your material and click save. I've already done this and my material is now being saved to one of the collections I have as part of my project. I'm gonna come over here and create a new material, which essentially just clears out the layer stack. Now I can left click and drag my material to the layer stack and this essentially is like just merging all the layers down. Now I'm going to add a transform and then I'm going to just move the manipulator and just do a rotation here. Now this rotation is completely breaking my tile so we've introduced seams that I need to fix. And to do that, I'm going to rely on some material blending. Once again, I'll left click and drag and drop my material here to the layer stack and this is going to default to a height blend. I can click this dropdown and I'm gonna choose this new custom mask blend. Now I can select the mask and choose the paintbrush. This allows me to paint a mask manually. I can come over to the brush and change the size. Now I can go into the 2D view and paint a mask around the edges of the tile to remove the seams. In this technique, I am blending the material with a rotated version of itself to introduce some variation in the repeating patterns found in the tile. I can tap the X key to invert the brush value to remove the mask. This acts like an eraser and the process then becomes refining the mask to reveal portions of the blended materials that fit well together. I can then adjust parameters like the mask blur and contrast to further refine the result. Here I will disable the material blend and transform layers. You can see that through blending materials with a custom mask, I am able to break up the repetition and make the tiling a little less apparent. 
Here I have taken some additional time to refine the mask. The key to this technique is to mask sections of rock to manually create an overlap between the layers to enhance the overall feeling of depth. Another option for removing repetition is to blend additional materials. Layering is always key when creating materials and in this example I am using Atlas Scatter to scatter flower petals on top of the rocks. Now I need to export my textures so I'm going to come over to the export option and next I'll go to export current view and here you can see that I can change my format. In my case I'm going to be working with the substance archive file. I'm using this format because it acts as an easy transport mechanism to get into other applications such as taking this into Substance Painter or using this in an application that supports the Substance format such as a 3ds Max project where this particular material was used. So here you can see that I have my resolution set to 4096 and then I can just simply click export to export the Substance material file. Here I have the render of the material with the maps exported from Substance Alchemist. I used Marmoset Toolbag for the rendering of this image. Now we can take a look at the final result of the material in this ArcViz scene. As one example, the material was used in this planter and the scene was rendered in 3ds Max using the Corona Renderer. In this video, we looked at using the new AI-powered image to material, and we also explored some options for tiling and removing repetition. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.